erkundigt sich noch nicht. Hallo, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum and hello. Welcome to the Daily Voice Cooks Eat edition with me, Salwa Smith of Cape Malay Cooking and Other Delights. I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. Okay, so this is Salwa Smith of Cape Malay Cooking and Other Delights. I'm doing um, a live cooking session this morning in conjunction with The Daily Voice. And the program is called The Daily Voice Cooks Eat Edition. And today we're going to cook. I'm going to show you how easy it is to cook a bubwati. So maybe you want to make bubwati for Eid or for any special occasion or just for every day as well. My recipe is very simple to use and um, just feel free to use my recipe as a guideline and then you can um, do your own additions or your own um, version of um, Bobotti, as there's so many different versions of Bobotti out there. So as I said, mine is very simple and easy to make. So yeah, so um, and please don't forget to get the daily voice of today. You'll find all my recipes in there. And besides uh, um, the Bobotti recipe, you'll find my uh, some, Six recipes in total will be in today's daily voice. So yes, so um, we'll start. So as I said, my recipe is very simple to make, and um, I I. I take pride in my recipes using minimum ingredients with everyday store cupboard ingredients that you have as well in your in your cupboard. So don't um, stress you. I just use whatever is in your cupboard. I I don't use extravagant ingredients. So yeah, I'm going to start by, ch by chopping one large onion. And you must please excuse me, um, this is the first time I'm doing a live cooking demo on Facebook or anywhere on Facebook. So um, just excuse me if there's some, if everything is not going too smoothly as well. So I'm just chopping my onion. Don't forget to get today's edition of the Daily Voice. You'll find the recipe in there if you um, miss any of the steps or any of the ingredients. And if you don't find it in there today, you can always go back to my Facebook page. It's on there as well. So I'm just chopping this um, onion. Very small. And in the meantime, I'll be heating my pot up here at the side. So I'm just going to put a little oil in here. I'm using olive oil, but you can use any oil. So it's just about um, two tablespoons of oil. And then I'm going to put, uh, put my onion in and it's going to start raising. So you can you see I'm using a, a, a glass chopping board. I prefer the glass chopping board because I find it's more hygienic and in um, comparison to the wooden one. So 
I'm just going to blaze this quickly. And then I've got my garlic and my ginger. I prefer using fresh garlic and ginger. So I never have the ready-made ones in my cupboard or in the fridge. Um, it's so easy to just peel a few every day. And then just use this grater, simple grater. And then um, even a normal cheese grater as well. Use this, um, the, 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 the small size and side and just grate it. I'm going to use about three, um, four cloves of garlic and just grating it. And as I said, there's so many different versions of the Bwati um, around. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just my simple way that my mother used and that I've written down and I think to use this one as well. So I'm just going to put the garlic in while that is the onions are braising. Give it a stir. And then I'm going to put my bay leaves. So I'm using fresh bay leaves. I've got a bay leaf freezer outside. So I'm just, I never have dried bay leaves. So I'm just putting the fresh ones in. And that can cook as well in the same time as the onions. And it's, it's a lovely fragrance. I wish you could smell the, my kitchen here now. The garlic alone gives a very nice, so the fresh garlic gives a very nice flavor and smell. You immediately uh, smell the difference between fresh garlic and um, ready-made garlic paste. So yes, while that's cooking, I'll just uh, wait for this to brown a bit. So you can see it's quite white still, so I'm just browning it a bit. And I know some people have been asking questions, sending questions in. So I'll try and answer some of those as I go along. And at the end of the show, one lucky viewer is going to win one of my books which is um, the little chefs and uh, my Kate Malay and other delights cookbook I'll show it to you clearer later on all right so it's just giving that a place and uh, I've got my spices here my recipe says curry spice so I make my own curry spice which we stock online as well so i'm just going to use my own curry spice with turmeric and some cloves i've got um, the crown cloves because i find it's better for um eating purposes nothing worse than biting on the whole clove and i've got my mince here and in the meantime i'm going to soak my bread i've got two slices of bread so this is about a couple of days old so i'm going to Soak it in water, just to soften up a bit. And just add a little drop of water in as well. So you want your onions to be a nice golden brown color. Taking some time after I walk it in eventually. Right. And I'll go to the questions for answer some of the questions that was asked. Um, so um Nerosha Johnson asked, what was the first dish you prepared? When discovering passion, your passion for cooking and um, how to impress your in-laws with cooking. And the first dish, I never, when, while I was a teenager and early adulthood, before I got married, I never cooked at home. My mother was always the cook, but I did the biscuits and cakes and desserts. So um, when I got married, I couldn't cook at all. 
my husband, which I will still tell the children after today. The first is we went for Hajj um, right after we got married in 1991, my husband and I. We were fortunate our parents sent us that time. So, uh, yeah, so uh, while we were in Makkah, he, he was craving fish fricadelle, so he asked me to make fish fricadelle. And up to today, I don't know what I did, but we never had a fish fricadelle that day. Um, it was a disaster, and we had to go buy food. So, um, yeah, that was one of the memorable times that I, but, um, yeah, and you learn as you go along. And when we got married, as I said, I, I couldn't cook at all. Well, I could do the basics, obviously. But more the intricate dishes I couldn't cook. So my husband bought me the Faldilia Williams cookbooks. And I have to say that and my mother and my mother-in-law, they were very helpful in guiding me and steering me to where I am today. And I just knew all the time that I wanted to compile a, a cookbook in memory of my parents and my, um, my mother-in-law. Yeah, because they did so much for us. During our early married life, and um, I have some more. My uh, our early married life. So this is my contribution to my parents and my mother-in-law, especially. So yes, um, yes, yeah, so I always knew I wanted to to compile a cookbook, and I always uh, collected recipes from everyone who was willing to share it. My brother, my aunties, and just uh, family friends as well. So um. I packed up all my recipes, kept it in a folder. I still have the folder today, in fact. I'll never part with that folder because that's one of my first recipes, my recipe books. So yeah, and um, I had, got married, I had my children, and that was always at the back of my head, so and I'm going to write a cookbook one day. So um, we moved to the UK in 1999. And then um, I decided I'm going to pursue my uh, the love of cooking and keeping our tradition alive for my children. So, um, yeah, when we moved to move, I continued with my Cape Malay cooking and, and traditional way of cooking just for my children's sake and to keep our heritage, heritage because being away from your family, it makes it more special for you, your heritage and your family and your culture. So we continued the same way, and eventually I, um, with the help of my husband, I self-published my first cookbook, and from there it just rocketed off of Angelina. So yes, I'm talking a lot, so let me, the, my onions are braised, you can see, and now I'm going to add my curry spice. So it's just, um, I'm going to use three teaspoons of curry spice. And as I said, my recipe is a guideline for you, so you can do chop and change whatever you want. If you feel you want to add more spice, add more, if you want to add less, you add less as well. But this is just the cloves that I put in, and I'm putting the turmeric in. So I prefer using turmeric in, um, instead of um, body, because I find the body has got a more yellow texture, then the turmeric is more deep, deep color and better flavor. So I've just added the masala in here. I'm going to add a bit more water. And then I'm going to add salt. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt, but this is again according to your preference. If you want more and more salt, you can add. But I find a teaspoon is quite enough. And I'm just going to give this a minute or so for the water to evaporate. And uh, coming back to the question about to impress your in-laws, I'm sure if you just put a little extra love and effort into your cooking, everyone will appreciate your cooking, not just your in-laws and your whole family. And then someone, um, Nikki asked, uh, my all-time favorite song. What is my all-time favorite song? So I don't listen to music. I don't sing. 
I mean, I was just grown, uh, we were just um, brought up that way with no music, music went around in our house. And um, yeah, so music never attracted me. And up to today, I can say um, I don't sing and I don't partake in any music activities or anything like that. But I do love a, a good Bollywood movie. So give me a movie any time of the day or nighttime when I'm free usually. So my mince is nice and it's, it's none of the mince. I think the onions are dried up, you can see. So I've got my 500 gram mince. I've got my two uh, slices of bread that I've been soaking in the water. And then I'm just going to add that together. And you can see I'm using my hands. There's nothing wrong with using your hands, your hands, as long as your hands are clean. I find using my hands better. You can feel the texture. You can feel uh, it's just better. You know what's missing and how it should feel in the end. After making it a few times, you know where you're going wrong, all right. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to put this off. And I'm going to add my onions to the mince. This off. And I'm going to add one egg in there. So it's a bit warm, so I'm just going to use a spoon initially to mix it all together so my hands don't burn. Because the onions is warm. So I'm just going to use my hand further. And then Rashida asked, how long does it take to roast the lamb, the leg of lamb? So what I do is I roast my leg of lamb in the oven. It's much better that way and it doesn't fall apart. It, when you carve it, it's carved into nice slices as well. So what I use is I use garlic, lots of garlic and um, rosemary, fresh rosemary and cloves and allspice. And then I pop it in the oven with a bit of water cover it and uh, pop it in the oven and then I'll, uh, I'll cook it in about an hour in the oven and um, after an hour I'll take the, the foil off and then cook it or grill it until it's done it usually takes about an hour hour and a half to two um, hour and a half to two for the depending on the size of the leg of lamb to cook in the oven. And you can serve that with uh, any vegetables of your toy choice. And in fact, I've just posted uh, my leg of lamb recipe on Facebook, so that is also there for your convenience. Yeah. And to be honest, lots of people ask me, why do I share my recipes? Why do, what do I hope to gain from it? But for me, it's just... It's just my way of, of making charity and it you know it makes me feel so proud when people say oh they their cooking has increased the cooking cooking skills has increased so much and their family is just so happy and especially now with the with the COVID nineteen coronavirus. Um, there's been so many people that has tested and tried and been baking and cooking all day long. And sending me the photos, I've literally have received thousands of photos these past two months, two months and um, it makes me happy so that's that's my reason for for sharing recipes as well and to keep my heritage and my culture shared with other people and it makes me happy as well so yeah and um so i've mixed this so i'm, I'm just gonna put it into a, my um dish I just you don't need to grease the dish because sometimes the mince has got extra fat in there. But I suggest as well you use a good quality steak mince with a little less fat, so um you don't get a too much fat in your in your um in your babuati. So. 
Yeah, that's that. So there you can see it's ready for the oven. I'm just, um, excuse me, I'm just going to wash my hands quickly. So um, I'm serving my babuati with a salad, with a green salad. I'll show you the end of putting it together. And I've got some a butternut salad as well. And now I'm just going to show you how to make a rice, gesmoorde rice. So I've got another onion that I'm just going to chop. So this is just a bonus for you today. I'll show you how easy it is to make a different type of rice. In, um, you don't need to make a yellow rice every time. You can make different types of rice. So I've got this um, onion and I'm just going to braise quickly. I'm just waiting for the pan. I've got my, my assistants here, which is my daughter. Assistants, my daughter and my husband so um yeah so i'm just waiting for this pan to heat up and i'm going to put a little olive oil in and a piece of butter oh never mind i'll get the Got to take the butter out, so I'll take it out quickly. And just put a piece of butter in there. And I'm just gonna braise that. Rice that's cooked already. Let me just get the rice. Sorry. So this is rice that's been completely cooked. I'm just changing it now. A bit. Go back to the questions again. Let's see, we've got another question. Um, Develine asks, do you cook with memories in mind? How do you control emotions when cooking in front of an audience? Yes, I do. I do cook with, with uh, lots of memories. Um, usually it's of my mother and my parents and um, when I do speak about my parents I do become quite emotional. Um, they both passed away now so um, yeah. So uh, yeah I just try and control my emotions as much as possible but it's, always, it's not always possible as well. <laughs> And I can uh, tell you the day of my book launch, I cried like a baby. Because that was just so emotional day for me, um, finally realizing that you can achieve your dreams, even if it's after so many years. And that's just another thing that I always tell people, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. If you set your mind to it and you feel it's in within your capabilities and within your reach, then you go for it, even if it's going to take you 10 years, 20 years or more. Like in my instance, it's taking me very long to, to, to compile my cookbook and for finally for my dream to come through. 
So yes, don't let anyone tell you uh, differently. And as I always say, after us and I'm proof of that as well. I'm now I'm I'm a mother of four children. I've got six, almost seven grandchildren. So um, yeah, and they are my biggest support. They always encourage me to do things as well. So don't let anyone tell you differently that you that you're not able to or that you can't do stuff. If one door close for you, I'm sure it's going to open another door that's going to be more beneficial for you. So, yes, and um, yeah, so you can see I'm just braising this onions, and that's one of the grandchildren walking, running past me. So, you can add to this rice, you can, can add. Uh, stick cinnamon and cardamoms or you can add um grated carrot as well so i'm just going to add dania chopped dania roughly chopped dania so it's okay So, um, yeah, and this is going to go on top of the rice. So the butter alone gives it a very nice flavor. And the onions and the tanya as well. So this I'll just wait very quickly. I'm sure uh, if I make it some other time it will look better. But um, for time purposes, I'm just showing you roughly how to make a different type of rice as well that you can serve with your bubuati. So I've got a bubuati that's cooking in the oven. So I'll show you now what the end result is, what it looks at the end of it. And, and um, when you, you put your bubuati in the oven, so it's going to cook halfway through and then you're going to whip your eggs. I didn't do that now because I did it previously on the other one. You're going to whip your two eggs with a bit of milk. And you're going to put it on top of the, um, the over the babuati. But as I said, this would have been halfway cooked. So then you're going to take your two eggs, whip, whisk it with a little milk and pour it over. And you can put some um, bay leaves as well on for extra garnishing. So, um, yeah, so, yes, that's it. Let me just see if there's any more questions. And uh, Nikki asked, what is the best dish to make on a budget? Now, there's so many dishes that you can make on a budget, especially when it's month in and uh, the cupboards are running a bit big. So, we always, what we always do is keep a... Uh, few extra tins of um, pulses, uh, maybe chickpeas or baked beans or butter beans in the cupboard. And then we've got ex um, pasta as well. There's always extra in the cupboard. And um, you can make a spaghetti bolognese. So we four in the family, so for us, I'll usually take about 250 gram meat, a minced meat and um, bulk it up with grated carrot and liquidized um, celery, celery as well. Gives a very nice flavor to it and the children will get extra nutrients as well from the celery and the carrots. So yes, you bulk it out with vegetables and you can e even use uh, aubergines or any other type of veg vegetables that you um, or mushrooms as well, yes, chopped mushrooms, sliced mushrooms. Mm. And that's one dish. And then you can make a uh, pilau rice with um, uh, chickpeas and a few pieces of chicken. So you use chicken breast, the fillets, or there's the pieces of chicken, whichever one do you want. And you make a pilau with it, that goes very far as well. And that's easily made on a budget. And um, dal, that's one of my favorite food in our house um, we always see that we have dal in the house as well so um, yeah I make dal I usually make it without meat 
So I'll make a tarkadal and I'll serve it with um, fish fricadel or just boiled eggs. So there's so many uh, dishes that you can make on a budget. Um, you just have to let your imagination um, stretch for a bit and if you're sh uh, short of ideas, I put all these recipes as I said on my Facebook page as well. So um, yeah, so I'll just show you what the end result look like of my bubbati and what I'll serve it with. So it usually bakes for about 30 to 35, 40 minutes, depending on the um, amount of mince you use. Uh, my recipe is 500 grams, but you can double that, rec that um, recipe successfully. And um, yes, and uh, you can even make it for eat. And if you're looking for other budget recipes to make for eat, you can always uh, make a biryani. A biryani goes very fast. Well, I know it's very difficult for most people, for all of us, in fact, now this time with the lockdown and uh, and all the, through the difficult times that we're going through. But we just try to make the best of it. And, and for the children's sake, uh, we go out a little bit of out to for them to make the day enjoyable so um, yes so um, and I would urge you all as well with eat coming up please stay at home don't worry about visiting your parents or your family I'm sure they all understand observe the lockdown rules and um, so everyone can stay safe um, I got first hand experience of the severity of this um, lockdown and the pandemic. My husband is C works in ICU and um, every day he comes home. He has to come through the side door first of all, the side gate, and dress outside before coming in the house. And every day is traumatic because of the amount of people that's dying in hospital, first of all. He can go on a break one minute and then the next minute when he comes back from break, his patient will have died. So yes, it's very, it's very, um, it's a very serious yeah. pandemic, and please don't take it like that. With me. I'm sure we can all go back to our normal days and our normal life when, when this is all finished. So yes, I'm just going to turn uh, turn around. So. <laughs> And you can see all the grandchildren's toys around there. My house is full of children's toys and uh right and this is what it looks like. So this is the finished Bobati. This is what what it looks like. This came out of the oven now. This is one that I made previously. Right, you can see the egg and the, the egg and the um, milk on top, and this I'm gonna serve it with this kosmora rice. You can make yellow rice, and the salad. So this is just a, a salad, a lettuce mixed with some feta, tomato, um, jalapenos, and uh, cucumber, and then I've got some roast potatoes here as well. That is just uh, roasted in the oven, baby potatoes, and I've got the, oh, sorry, I'll have to bring it there, the feta cheese, and feta cheese with butternut. So all this recipe is in today's um, Daily Voice edition, so you can please go out and support the Daily Voice and myself and get your copies of the recipe and um, yes and if you're short of any recipes or short of any ideas if you need advice you feel free to to send me a message on my facebook page or via whatsapp it's um 0719249583 but please don't send voice me um don't call me just send a message and i'll be happy to answer you as soon as i have a moment and yes i have to thank you for joining me today on my debut live on my debut live um, program 
shall I say. And I hope you enjoyed it and it was beneficial for yourself. And I hope you have a blessed Eid, Eid Mubarak. And uh, stay safe, as I said, stay home. Spend the day with your immediate family inside your house. And we'll see each other after the pandemic lockdown. The coronavirus, COVID-19 lockdown is ended. Yes, it's a mouthful. So, um, yeah, that's it from my side. And I hope you enjoyed it. And it was beneficial as game. And Eid Mubarak to everyone. And, oh, yes, let me first say who is the winner of the, the recipe book. And... Uh, De De Vilna Palay, you've uh, you're the lucky recipient of this Kate Malay cookbook, Kate Malay and Other Delights cookbook. As I said, this was self-published by myself and uh, with the assistance of my family. So, and it's also available in the ebook as um, most of the yes, um, I've got some other ebooks also available. You can have a uh, look online at www.kpaladylights.store for my other ebooks as well. And Devona Palay, please get in touch with the Daily Voice for to get your copy of my book. And that's it from me. I hope we can do this soon again. And I hope you enjoyed it. So that's from that's all from me. Okay, assalamualaikum. Bye bye.